So in this video, we're taking a look at using pedigrees and trying to figure out the genotypes of the individuals in the pedigree. Your sheet will have three different problems on it, and this first one we're going to do, do together, so you'll have an example of how to do the first one. Uh, I won't answer all of these questions down here at the bottom. I'll let that up to you, because once you get the pedigree filled in, I think it's everything's pretty answerable. And then you guys will be in charge of filling out numbers two and three based on the same ideas that we talk about in this first problem. So in problem number one, it says that cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease where mucus develops in the lungs, liver, and pancreas. Below is an autosomal pedigree tracing the passing of the cystic fibrosis gene through three generations. Determine the genotypes on the line next to or below each individual and shade in any carriers. So auto autosomal recessive means that in order to have the disease, you have to have both traits that are recessive. So when you fill this out, the first thing you're going to look for are the people that are affected by the disease. And the people that are affected is person number one shaded in, so they have the disease. So their, their genotype must be lowercase a, lowercase a. Now, the problem already started off by giving us a couple of individuals in here. And so we know that they're using A to represent the gene. And since this is an autosomal recessive trait, then that means this shaded person has to be little a, little a. So you're going to go through here and we're going to do the same shading. I'm sorry, we're going to do the same genotype for everybody that's shaded in. So number nine has the disease, so they're lowercase a, lowercase a. Number 11 has to be lowercase a, lowercase a. And number 12 has to be lowercase a, lowercase a. So anybody with a disease, since it's autosomal recessive, they have to have two recessive traits. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go back and you're going to see if you can start filling in children that we have on the pedigree. So the first child comes up in generation two, and that's child number three. So child number three, let's see if we can figure out. They're not shaded in. That means they don't have the disease, so they have to have a capital A. That capital A has to come from the mom because that's the only capital A available. The dad, number one, has to give a lowercase a. That means number three is a carrier. And they asked us to shade those in, so I'm going to use a larger tip here. I'm going to do my best at shading this in. When you identify your carriers, you usually half shade them in. So there's my first carrier that I have found. Now let's do the next kid. So the next kid is kid number five right here. So kid number five, uh, not showing the, the cystic fibrosis. So that means that this kid has to have an uppercase A. And under the same reasoning, the uppercase A has to come from the mom, so the dad has to give a lowercase a. That means that that's a carrier. We'll shade those in at the very end here. And the next kid is number seven. So number seven is the same thing. Doesn't have cystic fibrosis, so it has to have a capital A. That has to come from mom, number two. So dad had to give a lowercase a. And now we'll shade in the fact that they're carriers here. So number seven is a carrier, so half shade in. Remember, carriers are half shaded in. People that are affected are all the way shaded in. And this sun right here also has a disease, so also shaded in. All right, so I've identified uh, almost everybody now. And so now we have to figure out four and six. This is the last two that we got left. So let's figure out number four. So person number nine has the disease. And they have to get one uh, lowercase a from the mother here. So this mother had to give the lowercase a. That means the father, number four, has to have a lowercase a because that's the second lowercase a that number nine has to inherit. Well, since number four isn't showing signs of cystic fibrosis, that means number four is a carrier. And so they have to have a capital A because they don't have the disease. And that makes them a carrier that we will have shade in. So the father here, number four, is carrier. And then lastly, what about number six? Well, same thing goes. Since number six doesn't have cystic fibrosis, they have to have a capital A. And the only way for 11 and 12 to get cystic fibrosis is if the, the mother here, number six, has that recessive gene. And so now we filled in all the possible genotypes. And we could actually figure out everybody here. There wasn't a case where we couldn't figure out something. Sometimes when you do these, you can't figure out the second gene. Because sometimes it's, it could be, well, it could be capital, it could be lowercase. So that happens from time to time. All right, so let's go down here and let me show you how to answer some of these questions. It says for all phenotype questions below... 
Answers include normal carrier or cystic fibrosis. So person number A, what is the phenotype of individual number two? So we go up here to number two. Oh, and I forgot the shade number two in. They gave us number two. Number two is a capital A, lowercase a, so they're a carrier. And so I shade those in, identify the carriers. Number 13 is a carrier. I forgot to go back and shade in the ones that were already done for us. So number two is a carrier because number two has capital lowercase. So they're carrying this recessive gene. So our answer to number two is they are a carrier. Phenotype number three. Number three is a carrier as well. They don't have the disease, but they carry the trait. And then I will let you guys fill in C through G. Then you guys will be responsible for working number two and number three. So number two is about albinism. Uh, again, recessive and autosomal. So it's the same rules that you learned up here above. The third one is sickle cell anemia, autosomal recessive. Same rules that we learned up here above. So the first thing you do is you should go in and you should fill in all of your shaded ones because autosomal recessive means that the shaded ones have to be lowercase, lowercase. Then you go back and you start working on the children and seeing if you can figure out the children. If you have any questions, let me know.